So, um, salam alaikum, good morning, good morning, and welcome. Uh, my name is Hamlet. Um, I'm a University of Wolverhampton, and today I'm going to be talking about the Omanerial System Integration for Monitoring and Management of Landslide, a case study of the Dominican Republic. So, first of all, I would like to give you just a brief introduction while we're going to be talking about this day. Uh, we're first going to be talking about drones, the different type of drones, then disaster management and landslide, like how are we, we going to apply them, and then a framework that how we can uh, apply this technology from traditional workflows. Then we're going to uh, develop and discuss how was implemented the technology with all the workflow included, and then finally results and conclusion. So oh, there is a three type of drones according to the design. We have a fixed wing drones, middle drones, and multi-copter drones. The fixed wing drone is like an airplane and it has a very long autonomy flying, but it has a restriction in the degree of uh, maneuverability. In contrast to multi-copter, uh, they can fly uh, with, with X, Y, Z coordinates and have more mobility uh, instead to have more auton autonomy. Uh, flying around. So when we mix these two type of drones, then we have the beetle drones that they can have the possibility to take off and land in as a multi-copter drone and also have the, the big autonomy that the fixed wing drone has. So for disaster management landslide, uh, first we need to understand why we're going to apply this kind of technology in, in this area or this kind of workflow. Uh, there's three important reasons to adopt drone according to the literature. And it's, it's about to human risk reduction, transport on capture data and increase the, the amount of data. So there is a three tasks for landslide that we're gonna be focused on is damage assessment, situation awareness and risk communication. And after that, there is a selection like a material selection drone, sensor, software and analysis that we can carry out according to the task and also the, the outcomes that we want to generate. Uh, for this case, uh, we're going to be looking at the 3.1, uh, as mentioned before. And for the drone, we, uh, we choose a crop culture drone because it was that, that we have available in that moment. And then the RGB camera. There's also other kind of sensors that will be very interesting to try, but for that moment, uh, it was not available. So what are the benefits to, uh, and challenges uh, to apply drones in urban areas? The benefits are the accessibility of data. We can have data that we cannot reach normally in an urban settings. And then we, uh, because in urban settings, some councils and, and institutions, they may not have uh, like a digital workflow. Uh, then we can produce those kind of uh, outcomes uh, that we can make it more reliable the, when we present the data about a specific situation that happens in a community. Then we save we say cost and uh, simulate innovation in, in the field. But the challenges are normally for safety, privacy, and perception on what is having drawn around. Um, for, for other uh, research, uh, safety means like what, what are the problems that happens when the drones fail into a specific area? The height, the, the weight, and also the damage that can cause. Then uh, the perception of privacy, when, when we have the camera and all the sensors, what kind of data can be collected through the drone in a specific high or a specific cells. And after the perception to having drones around, uh, how people feel and how they, they're going to manage that kind of, uh, that kind of um, stress, let's say, in, in that way. Then we have accuracy, skills, and high initial investment in some cases. So the framework that it was proposed to, to develop, it, it has a traditional, then we have with the drone, and then we have a future trends that we can then identify uh, later. So for the traditional method, the, the, the institution identify the case of area, then the risk and issues to, to evaluate, and then they normally go physically inspect, take some data, um, like images and testimonies about the community, 
but just in the ground. They they take the the information, go to the computer, make a, the in Google Maps the sketch in GIS, and then finally they make the risk and recommendation maps uh, about if if there is problem in construction or any other kind of of issues. Then uh, the new methodology that it was uh, proposed is to do the two first steps and then utilize the drone with images, videos, and uh, photogrammetry like a survey in order to reconstruct in 2D and 3D digital surface model and digital terrain model uh, to, um, to have a curiosity of, of the terrain, like how it works. And, and based on that, identify what are the problems and risks uh, behind that specific area. Uh, that they want to, to assess. And then finally make their recommendations. For future trends, if we have a drones like an autonomous flying in the city and with live streaming uh, systems in a, in, with cloud computing, then uh, with algorithm or artificial intelligence, then in real time, we can be processing that data, updated to the cloud. In the cloud, we can, uh, along with BIN, and GIS made the reproduction of those scenarios and finally have uh, like a real-time early warning system that can be used by apps or any other means if the community wants and how we can build like a small community with that. So for this case, um, uh, we have a landslide problem that uh, one day the community start to, uh, to feel some earth movements and then we identify that uh, the landslide happened in in the south area where was not a lot of people or, or a grand um, a big population of people there then uh, only three houses they went around and the highway was damaged then we have two other infrastructure that they represent risk and vulnerability for the community it was the electrical grid and the school so uh, what it was made was with a dti phantom 3 uh, professional, it was made um, a survey with the drone instead of having like a topography or wait on the three weeks uh, that a professionals can make carry out that kind of assessment. So it, it was flying uh, with a photogrammetry technique and taking images and pictures about the site. And with that, um, it was made uh, three specifically uh, objectives. One, it was to identify the area where was specifically the problem. Two, what was the magnitude or the type of landslide? What, what was really happening? And three, what um, might be the possibility of vulnerability for, for the site? So after it was made the description part about the site, the photos, videos, then the 3D model uh, was made to make measurements about uh, how big was the landslide and where was uh, in, in the place. Then with that, it was made on turn lines, which is allow the professionals to more uh, engage with the data and make their uh, final conclusions. So uh, with the images, 3D and other things, they can identify that some of the problems that were happening in that specific area was caused by the construction in the opposite side of, of uh, of the community. So as they say, um, as they finally said, like, uh, because it was a construction as a bridge in the opposite side, uh, the problem of the landslide was regarding to a material extraction and erosion of the soil. Then uh, after they evaluate the different structure in that area, they identified like the school, it was necessary to, to have like a security factor then improve the accuracy with other sensors as a LIDAR to have more description and geometric measurements about the, the site and future works in 360 camera apps for early warming uh, problems. Uh, this is on reference and thank you so much. If you have any questions, just let me know. Thank you.